I'm Andy. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jack. And together we've spent the last year restoring our steel sailing yacht. We started off with a little 24-foot coastal cruiser called Aeolus. Then we moved up to a 28-foot long keel called Miss Rosie. But because she was too small for a family to live on, we took on the huge task of restoring a 38-foot steel cutter-rigged pilot house yacht with a lifting keel. Over the last year we've done most of the big metal work and welding, most of the painting, and over this winter we are working on whatever jobs we can fit around the terrible weather here in North Wales. Once she's ready to float we will be preparing her for blue water and living aboard and we'll be setting off to sail around the world as a family. Come along with us on this epic journey. Afternoon everybody. Right, so last week uh, you saw us building these bits of furniture or starting to build them. Uh, this week uh, we're getting into the kind of more fi the finer detail. Uh, we've got a huge box of stuff that came with the boat um, and we're going to get all of that out and see what we've actually got, wooden bits and pieces and we've got bits that we've stripped off the boat when we were ripping all this down. Uh, I should say before we go through this, this upholstery on these cushions uh, we're not keeping this. This is the these are the original cushions with the original upholstery. Uh, we don't like them, but they're fine for now. We will be recovering them. So first things first, let's get the big cardboard box of stuff out and see what we've actually got. There's also lots more teak panels um, down the side that we haven't got out. And there's more at home. And there's more at home. They're all in different um, stages, aren't they, of prep. Some are varnished and we're going to have to strip the varnish. Some are completely unstained and stuff like that. Um, so obviously the key will be to try and make them all look the same. As Mads would, Mads would say, glorious, glorious sanding. So these are just the teak uh, veneer panels. Um, they're actually teak veneer on marine ply, but it's really, really thin. Um, and they're gonna be perfect for the fronts of these benches and they match what's downstairs because they've come off the boat. Uh, these panels that e either came off the boat or were with the boat when we got it. So um, it should look in keeping with the rest of the boat and I've got to try and get the um, join in between the two to be as close as I can. Um, well, I don't have to actually do that. I could leave a great big gap and it would still be just as functional, but we want it to look nice. <laughs> yeah, so we're using this as a joiner panel to join the two teak panels together. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. We're using this as a joiner panel to join the teak panels together. This will get painted, so it will all be painted white on the inside. Um, but we're using this Gorilla Glue to stick it to here. Um, thank you to the amazing person that bought this off our Amazon wish list. I don't have your name here, um, yeah. but thank you. You know who you are. So yesterday we were putting some teak panelling on the front of this. Um, as you can see, these are the boxes that we've made for the seats for the pilot house and the wood doesn't match the original wood on the boat. So we're putting uh, teak panels on the fronts of them all so that they match. Um, we're gonna be doing more of that today and more trimming. And the other thing I want to do is build uh, a little box along the front of this so that these don't flip up. We might still hinge these, I'm not sure, but at the minute when you sit on them, they can tip up. And we've got some dead space here. We, don't, we can't have the box go all the way down to the floor because these panels here have to lift up for engine access. But I can make a box that kind of comes down six inches or so and then goes in and it's just got a po pockets in to shove stuff in 
and then under here again we're going to have a box possibly with a drawer in it or just an opening just to keep bits and pieces in um, that we need fast access to. In fact, what that would be really good for would be life jackets and flares. So we could put three life jackets and a pot of flares in that and it's within very fast reach of the cockpit. Um, but that kind of thing. So a box under here to take up some of that strain and a box under there but not going all the way to the floor because of the need to access the engine. Uh, and then when that's done we're going to finish or continue veneering and trimming the rest of these panels. We're still mulling about whether to have a box or pocket here for gloves and beanies and stuff. We might do that but for now we've just got this mahogany beam across the front um, to tidy things up and to, to provide a bit of support for the lip of the front of the seat. Uh, it's a bit of a working out, figuring out as we go along thing. Next thing that we're going to do though is build some structure under this end with a pocket definitely for uh, the flares and life jackets and stuff that you've got in your pockets and we may end up with one and we're, just not, we're sure not sure yet sure. Might, might not be worth building there but we'll see so yeah this bit next piece of teak to see this is a teak board that was left over but to see if it'll fit on the back here and then um, what I've just been doing is making up this again this is will all be trimmed and fettled and made nice and veneered and corner pieces and everything else but this just means we've got a pocket here I'm going to cut a hatch in this bit as well I think or an opening so you can feed your, your life jackets and things in through there but this structure takes out the flex in the seat and provides a little bit of storage, quick storage, but doesn't go to the floor so that when you're working in the engine bay, you're not likely to smack your head on it. Well, I'm likely to smack my head on it because I smack my head on everything. But yeah, there's still more to do. It's just the days are so short and it's so difficult to get anything done. The other thing that we're trying to achieve with all of this is to be able to take apart the boat with a screwdriver if we need to. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Pam Wall. Uh, Pam Wall's a bit of a legend in the sailing world. Just go and look her up on YouTube. And, and when you look at her um, walk show round of her boat, Kandarik, and she's discussing with the interviewer um, about the fact that uh, her boat and, and the Swan uh, that they were discussing as well, you can take the whole boat apart with a screwdriver. And I really like that kind of functionality. Um, this boat originally was all glued and pinned. Fantastic, very rigid, but if you need to get behind anything to do any repairs uh, you have to rip the panels off and crowbar them off which is so destructive and such a shame to to have to do that and of course being a steel boat this is going to need repairs down the line we're going to have welding and metal work to do uh, so underneath this side under the under there is the fuel tank or one of them there's one each side actually um, so all of this at the moment I'm putting it all together with brass screws and, and caps which look aesthetically pleasing and um, and it means that if I need to get this apart I won't have to break anything or crowbar anything you just get in there with one screwdriver and take the whole thing apart same with all of these wall panels we'll be taking them off veneering them and screwing them back up so that if we ever do need to get behind them to get to wiring to get to pipe work, plumbing work, or to do metal work repairs, we can, it's nice and simple. So we've just got to try and construct this in a way that every panel comes off without having to take another panel off in the meantime. And here's a good example of that. So this corner, we've gone too far into that corner really. Well, not with the panel, but with the, the mahogany top. I need to move that along a little bit um, so that we have a separate piece of teak paneling screwed onto this bit. Um, and that the you can get it off without having to take this bit off um, so that like I say each panel is removable without having to remove something else to get to it
so this box now, and I may make excess from the other side, as I've said, is somewhere where we can store gloves, hats, beanies, life jackets, you know, folded up, um, flares, just a quick, uh, things that we need quick access to. It offers lots more support to this seat, and I can take the whole thing apart with four, uh, six screws. Obviously, it'll have the teak facing on it as well, and the trim, and blah, 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 so it'll look nice, although I quite like the birch. I will be making some proper corners to go in here, um, but uh, I haven't got them for now, so they'll come later on. There we are, like that. And again, these will be glued on as well and taken off and sanded and polished and made nice. Um, so this is the this is the test, the dry fit, literally the dry fit, because we're fitting it all without glue and then um, we'll take it all apart once we know it's all perfect well as perfect as it's ever going to be it's me building it remember um, but once it's once it's right we'll take it all apart and pin and glue it together but only these bits not the front bits because like i say all the other panels to take to disassemble it will be a matter of just taking screws out to disassemble the whole unit change of plan we've actually decided to glue them on now I'm just doubting my abilities and being over cautious thinking I need to take them back off again but um, I think taking them back off is just gonna they're just gonna split when we try and prise them off so um we're gluing them on now no, no, don't go away from the edge oh yeah well, that's the other thing a couple of these have got a little hairline crack in where I put the panel pin in and um, and I think that is just going to cause problems trying to remove these later. You might think I'm mad, but I'm actually using Mitafast, which is it's for picture framing, but it's just cyanoacrylate. It's just super glue, really. Um, and then to set it off, uh, this um, kicker, which is um, it's just trichloroethane. Uh, but if you buy super glue from a hobby shop or anything like that, it's very very expensive but if you go to the hardware store and buy this mitre fast stuff it's a damn sight cheaper it's like eight eight quid or something for the for a big bottle with the with the kicker with the activator um much much oh there you go that doesn't even need pinning much much cheaper than buying it from the hobby store or or the hot or um you know buying branded super glue uh, so yeah, that's what I'm using and it's designed for picture frames and let's face it This is basically a robust pi framing, isn't it? Let's put one or two pins in there just for, for good measure So the pins are really just holding it together while the glue sets and with that sign with the cyanoacrylate and the trichloroethane It'll set pretty flipping quickly anyway What's nice What's nice about this particular cyano is that it's quite um, it's quite viscous. It's low viscosity, um, so uh, it's 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 quite thick, and you've actually got some time to kind of play with it and wiggle it around, and then it doesn't. This stuff sets it off really fast. Progress update: um, these lids now, even with the piece of mahogany along the front, were still kind of tipping forwards when we sat on them, and I've resolved that issue for now by just screwing a, a batten along the back so that they just slot in underneath they're going to be latched down every single lid and cover on the boat will have latches on it so that uh, in the event of the worst happening and as turning turtle uh, everything's strapped down everything locks down um, these have now got the same matching mahogany uh, beading along the edge um, angle along the edge as the seats in the saloon you can get into them easily. I'll tidy up all of that framework and make it look a bit neater as we go along. Um, and and so the reason that we haven't um, done lift out lids like this one yeah. is because we want to be able to stand in there, don't yeah. we? Yeah, oh, that's a good point. So these lockers go down, but they go right under the side decks as well. So 
by, by being able to lift these off completely, I can actually get into there and crawl into there under the side decks for really deep archive storage, things that we only maybe use once a year. Yeah, and to get to our steering system. And to get to the steering system. So um, if we'd have put just lift out lids like this, uh, it would have been more difficult to kind of get things in and out. Um, some of you will probably think that's a crazy idea. But that's okay. You can think that if you want. So, another update. Where are we up to? I'm going home um, in a minute because I'm at work tomorrow. So Melissa and Jack are staying here. Uh, but this is all now constructed and it's built and it's strong. And we've got teak veneer on this and teak veneer on this and teak veneer on this. And no teak veneer on that. That's what Melissa's doing. And we've got mahogany edges to these lockers that we can lift up to get underneath. And as we've said, the, the upholstery uh, isn't staying. We'll cut some new cushions to fit this and uh, yeah that was just from the old seats yeah it's just from the old seats but this is looking good there's still obviously as you can see lots of trim to do along the top of here and down here and round bits and pieces to pretty it up but in terms of you know can we use this now yeah absolutely it's it's all everything else that gets added on now is just cosmetic up here so i'm um, dead pleased uh, now i'm gonna uh, have something to eat and then dash home and work all day tomorrow um, bye for now from me. Don't go away because Melissa and Jack are carrying on. And you might be back. Oh, I think I will be back. In I'll this be episode. Back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, the plan was for today for me to carry on veneering in here, um, but the sun is out, kind of. It's not wet, it's not windy, so I've got to seize the opportunity and sand and grind and all those lovely things so I can get some paint on another area. So that's my plan for today. We will come back to the veneering, um, but I need to seize this opportunity. Look at it, it's like a mill pond out there. If you can see out of our dirty windows. But it's a beautiful day. motivated to get out here this morning because it's really cold it's like four degrees I think but now I'm out here um, I'm just feeling really like it's it's you know you couldn't ask for a better view if, from your office for the day have a look at this it almost feels like if you sit here it almost feels like you're actually in the sea she's kind of pointing that way wanting to go What's really annoying is when you're getting really into bashing a bit of rust with your chipping hammer and you drop it over the side. So now I've got to go and get it. The plus side is we're not in the sea, but it's still blooming annoying. I'm not sure if that's rain. It's not meant to be raining. Oh, it's 
but that's about as much as I can do outside today because it's getting really cold. Um, short, sharp bursts outside is all we need. So I'm going to go back indoors and do some more work now. But this is how far I've got. Uh, it's taken a while because there's lots of rust and scale under the tow, tow rail. Lots of rust and scale, I'll show you, along this little bit here. Um, so it's taking a while. So, but I've done the first sort of little bit in comparison to this side, I don't know. And then obviously I've taken back the paint. Um, I will need going over with sandpaper. And hopefully the weather's meant to be the same tomorrow. I can come out and I can carry on down there. And then get it ready for a coat of paint. It's Christmas! watching remember you can follow our instagram and facebook pages for news and updates you can support us on patreon and coffee and you can get our new Sailor melody shirts and merchandise by clicking the pictures under the video or clicking the links in the video description and of course don't forget to subscribe to our channel click the notification bell and give the video a thumbs up we will see you very soon andy melissa and captain jack 